All right, everybody, let's go ahead and do a visual and audio check. How is everybody tonight? Good evening. Good evening, Rips. How are you? Kenny, good evening. Trader Page, welcome. You guys can see I have the Nikkei behind me. I'm going to get everything set up on my end while I wait for your guys' reply. Sounds good. Everything sounds and looks good. Thank you, everybody. All right, let's see if I could get this set up. I'm a little bit slow. <laughs> Today was a rough day for me in the markets and just in general. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll do a brief one and we can start slow markets while everybody starts to pile in here. Um, so yeah, this weekend I, I was able to get my taxes done and I tried to submit them today here in the US, it's tax day. But unfortunately the software I was using just was not transmitting it and it was really, really frustrating. Um, the company I was doing my taxes through, I, I got frustrated, went in and bought some puts on, on their stock and it worked out today. Um, so, so that was interesting. Um, Trader Page, there is an echo. C can everybody hear an echo or is, is the sound, is the audio okay? Sounds good for you? you good, good, awesome. You're doing them now? Yeah, I mean, it's tax day. It's the last day of your taxes. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and then start this. Um, as always, I'm Coach Dakota, Coach DBA. Um, here is our top step risk disclosure. I'm gonna type that into our YouTube chat. As always, we're gonna be analyzing the live markets. You can see the, the Nikkei and the live markets behind me. Everything that I say and do is for educational purposes only. Um, if you do, you know, trade or follow me, it's, you're up to your own. Uh, it's, it's your own, you're on your own essentially. And it's, uh, you know the risks, right? It was an interesting day. Uh, I figured I'd go over my day today. Um, I, I still have about, I mean, I took a loss. Um, I was, can you believe that or not? I, and I'll go over. This was my trading day. You could see behind me. Here was the Nikkei. And if you guys watched Mick on shoulder tap, uh, he pretty much summed it up, right? Just felt like I was just canning ball, like cannonballing uh, the market. So essentially, I shorted the Nikkei here last night and I lost. I shorted again here, and I lost. And then I shorted again here, <laughs> and I freaking lost again. And then this morning when the New York session opened, I kept shorting here, and it wicked me out. I took my loss, and I got stopped out at 39,520. Uh, just been selling and selling and selling, and sure enough, after it stopped me out, you know, the rest is history. We had this huge sell-off. Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, it's just one of those things where I was a bit impatient and I, I've been a little impatient lately. It, hindsight's 2020. You could see there's a lot of resistance here, support here. This zone would have been a lot better if I was more patient and I was waiting for the market. But I was looking to short. We had some crazy news going on to the market. We opened up Sunday night and the market kept rallying all night. And I was just thinking to myself, you know what? Nikkei's rallying. Uh, why? I, I, this is a great risk reward on taking a short. And it kept rallying up, right? Just like you're trying to buy the dip and it keeps dipping. You keep selling the rip and it keeps ripping. And then after I get stopped out, then it starts to sell off. Um, that's okay. So here is, and I figured I'd start with this. Here is my live account. I'm still at about 122,000. Um, as you can see, here was my ugly loss. Here was my week. But that's the thing. When you're scaling your account, and, and I figured this would be a really good point that I can talk about because, you know, everyone that I, I know or everybody who does trade for a living and, you know, is a real trader goes through this. I mean, what kind of a, a world would we live in if you never take drawdown, if you're always at your high watermark and you're never taking losses? And as you scale an account, your winners are going to grow and your losses are going to grow. So as you can see here, you know, before I started scaling my account, minus 3,000, minus 4,000, you know, plus 8,000. This is when Mick bumped me up. Um, I'm trading this account very similar to 
how you copy trade 3XFAs. So a daily loss limit on one XFA or on one uh, combine is 3,000. And if you're copy trading amongst three, then it turns into 9,000. So, you know, daily loss limit, 9,000, very similar to like a 3,000 if you're copy trading. Then my winning days are, you know, of course, bigger. And that's the reality of scaling and growing account. It's a double-edged sword. Um, your profits are bigger, your losses are bigger. So, yeah. I figured I could show you guys this. Um, right now, I'm actually in a short on the Nikkei in my live account. Uh, I'm, I'm in short 38,710. Um, right now, I'm actually logged into my combine. Let me, I'll, I'll walk through this trade in a little bit, but let me show you where I'm short. 38,710. I did take profit here at 600 even. And I'm looking for us to break down into the 38,500. And the reason why is you see this mess from the middle of March. As we start to break in, I'm looking for us to maybe have this become a range again. And so we kind of broke down into this. If we continue to break down, I might look for 38,400s and maybe Nikkei to test the bottom of this. We will see, I got in short three contracts. So just like if I'm copy trading three XFAs, you know, one contract times three is three contracts. I already took profit on one and we will see if we break down on the Nikkei. Um, right now, I'll have to check my live account. I'll pull it up, I'll log in once we go through our analysis um, and go through it, right? So anyway, um, let's talk about how the markets were today. I, I mean, to be honest, it was a really good day in the markets in perspective of volatility and opportunity. I'm excited. I love this type of a price action. So here's the NASDAQ and here is the daily chart on the NASDAQ. We have been watching this for a while now. We have this bullish uptrend here on the daily. We've been testing these lows. We broke through that uptrend. And then we also had this consolidation that we've been in for the past pretty much two, three months almost. And so here is the consolidation that we've been in. Well, today we finally broke down. And so some of the areas that we're looking at, if you guys could remember, is we look at the daily and there are some key areas right in this zone, right? It's, it's not a perfect, but this is the first zone right around 17,700 to 17,800. So I do believe we can still move to the downsides and we can continue to sell off. Um, we're kind of, this is the first break out of this range, right? So I'm a big bullish. Uh, I am a bullish trader and I have a habit and my perspective in looking at the markets is buying the dip. So here at Top Step, we're trading um, in and out within the same day. I'm also a, a kind of a longer term trader. And so whenever I see movements like this, I get, I get excited. Uh, I get really excited and I say, you know, if we keep selling off, you know, then I'm going to switch into a longer term account and I'm gonna be looking for longer term opportunities to see if we could get a very nice pullback and find some opportunities to buy, right? In the longer term perspective. Um, this could signal maybe taking some, you know, trades to the south side, maybe looking for us to have a bit of a continuation tomorrow. Um, but any of my trades that are short, since I am a bull trader, I, I like to have a really good risk reward, looking for higher probabilities, and I'm not in my short trades for as long. Um, and it's just me. It's 100% me in terms of the way I trade and my trading style. So I'm looking for 17,700 um, down here on this daily this daily area. You could see it. I mean, this is pretty much it. So 17,700 to 17,800. This is a, a 100 point zone. This is a pretty big zone um, that we could continue to find some more momentum um, to the downside. Now that does, anything can happen, right? We could very well just turn around and rally just like we have before and these dips are being bought up. Um, 
This is something I'm going to be paying attention to. We broke below that key 18,000 psychological level. Um, we'll watch. Let's just watch the market. I'm going to be waiting. Uh, I'm going to try and exercise my patience uh, on waiting for opportunities to um, take really good risk reward, high probable scalps to the downside, and then maybe looking for some key levels to find some buying opportunities uh, tomorrow. That being said, I'm, I'm going to be bouncing between this and the Nikkei. Like I said, let, let me switch to my live account and I'll show you. I'll show you my live trade. Agreed. Tomorrow is looking for continuation to the downside. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Continuation now that we've broken out of that range. I did get a haircut. Um, I, I didn't have time to... I, I like to shave. I don't like letting my, my beard or facial hair grow out very... For very long, um, I am, what do we call it? want to call it, superstitious, where a lot of times where I will wait until I have a losing or a winning day, and then I'll go get a haircut and get cleaned up. Um, so yeah, here's my live account. Um, I'm up, I, I did close one for take profit. Let's see if it will show here. Let's see, I'll show you. Does this show the entries? Yeah, so there's my live account. I entered it in two. As we started right here, we sold off, we pulled back. I got into a third one on this pullback, and then I got out of one here, and I am currently holding these two for this breakdown. And I'll show you guys how I manage this. I'm going to put, while I'm here, I'm make, let's put a, a, a buy stop. I'm going to keep this buy stop a little bit loose so I can manage it. And we can watch this together while I... While I answer some of your questions before I go into the next market. Rips, beard equals guaranteed profits. <laughs> well, so far, I mean, the longer my, my beard grows, the higher the probability of me uh, making money. But that just means I've taken some losses, right? Richard Harris, Dakota, the market, the market likes to move in twos. Do you ever enter in with a second entry? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Richard Harris, you kind of see it right here, right? Where I got into my first entry here, and then we pulled back, and I got into my second entry here. So I, I do like to build positions depending on how confident I am with the trade. Um, 27.7, is it too late to short Nikkei? Um, it depends on your strategy, right? Uh, I'm not going to suggest buying buy or sell, but my analysis, the way I was looking at it, is if we do continue to break down, we could start to see, you know, 38,500, maybe 38,400. Uh, but I could be wrong, right? Uh, this, I, I entered this trade at open. Anything could happen into the markets. I, I would just stay focus on, um, focus on your strategy and focusing on managing your risk. Um, we'll be creating by 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm superstitious. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to be superstitious, but you, you really don't want your superstitions or anything to affect your trading. It's just something fun that I do, uh, and it's just something to keep me engaged with the markets and say, yeah, if I see somebody in public, and they say, Dakota, your beard and your facial hair is going really long, you must be struggling in the markets. And yeah, and then when I do get cleaned up, um, it feels good, right? It's kind of like a little reward when you start doing good. Um, you reward yourself, right? Do you always trade the Nikkei on a hundred tick? No, I, I look at the Nikkei on the hundred tick because it's a little bit more clean. Um, sometimes I will jump down to a five minute chart because we could start to zoom in and you can see we're, we're pushing the low of the session now. I'm gonna actually move this down just a little bit. And if you we zoom into the 100 tick, you could see how thin this order book is because there's a lot of gaps and as we're talking about the Nikkei guys, and, and remember, I'll talk about the NASDAQ, I'll talk about gold, and then I'll talk about crude oil tonight. Um, behind the scenes, guess what, guys? I am talking to Andre. Uh, I had a conversation with him today to see about getting him here onto slow markets and seeing if he could bring the keys to the house account. What are your guys' thoughts on that? If I could bring Andre on, say, maybe Wednesday. Nothing's confirmed yet. I'm still working on... Uh, the details to see if we could bring him on and find something there. Um, let me see. I, I, I'm just reading some notes, some side notes. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I mean, like I said, 
And this is what my little pitch was to him. I said, what could go wrong? We have keys to the house account. We have, you know, nighttime trading when the risk manager and the CEO is going to be sleeping and the Nikkei and yeah, I mean, what could go wrong, <laughs> right? Um, okay, so here's another note. There will be a, this is just a reminder. There will be a bell to bell this week on Top Step TV for a free reset. So that's just a reminder. And so far that is the, that's all my notes so far. Yeah, MP sound asleep, Andre half asleep, and we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about the, the Nikkei where, you know, maybe MP wakes up and he's made 10,000 or who knows what will happen, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how it goes, um, having some more guests onto slow markets. I'm watching this, guys. I'm going to watch this for just a little bit. Well, this is a key area for the Nikkei. We're at session loads, 38.570, and we're starting to bid below that. If we break, I might get out of another one because sometimes if the Nikkei breaks, we could break pretty violently. I'm going to watch this and answer a few more questions because um, if we do break, I might close out of one at using a buy at bid, slapping the bid. Okay, let's get to a couple more questions. Nikkei pulled pork sounds dangerous. Yes, definitely no pulled pork on the Nikkei because the Nikkei is $25 per tick and there's no micros. It's it's a big boys, big boys market for sure. There we go. There's a break. New sessions lows here on the Nikkei. I'm going to watch this. Let's see if we could get some momentum on this sell-off or if we're going to be faked out. I, when it, whenever we break like this to a new session lows, I want to see momentum. I want to see follow through. Um, very similar to like we got over here when we originally broke to the new lows. We had this huge move to the downside of about 100, you know, 20 ticks. And so I want to see if we could get something similar. If we could get a nice big move to the south downside. Bids at 540, 545. Um, Drew, we do trade gold. I'm going to be going over gold tonight. I just want to manage this trade because this is my live account and I'm a trader first guys. <laughs> this is my live account. I, I want to make sure I'm trading good and I'm managing this trade. I might get have another contract if we could get a little bit bigger of a push. Let's see if I could. 525. Let's see. Okay, I'll take 520. I'll, I'll see. This is a live account. So the orders and the, the fills are not like a sim. Okay, I just got that one filled. I'm going to adjust my stop loss. Put that right here. And let's see if we could touch 500. Up Tonight, I'm up about $2,500 on this account. So looking good, feeling good on, on this trade. I'd like to see us just push. No hesitation. Um, the next area, I'm going to jump out to the 100 tick and I can show you what I'm going to be looking at next. So we are continuing to push down. This is a key level that we did have a pivot um, right here. So that was the pivot and I'm okay with getting out at this one. The next level was maybe be 400. I'm going to watch this. I already took profit on two. So I've realized $1,700. And do I just let this one run is what I'm thinking of in my head. Paper handed. Yeah, I'm paper handed tonight. Um, after I took a big loss yesterday, um, I just want a small base hit, um, to be honest, guys, because Part of getting out of a drawdown or having a bad day, because you guys seen my trading card where I took a $9,000 lap, I took a $9,000 loss on Monday last week, and then I finished the week off plus 30,000. Um, this week is starting off exactly the same. You know, I took a $90,000 loss um, Monday this week, and here it is the next day. And what I like to do is 
take out small profits. You know, work on base hits, um, not trying to revenge trade and say, you know, if the Nikkei sells off all the way to 38,400, I'm making up half my half my loss, right? I just want to take a or 9,000. Did I say 90k? So I, I took a $9,000 loss yesterday uh, or today during the New York session, and today's Tuesday now. And so I want to start off my Tuesday with a good base hit. I mean, if you consider a base hit plus, you know, $2,500, then sure. Um, $2,500 on one trade is nothing to say. And it was just a, a small base hit, right? Yeah, maybe not trade Mondays first. <laughs> I mean, that could be one, right? Just skip my Mondays and then just finish the week off strong or, you know, have the rest of the week really strong. Yeah, 9,000, guys. Um, yeah, Richard Harris. Dakota, I have been scared to trade the New York session today and Friday, not going to lie. Um, Daniel, if you guys are ever scared to trade a session, sometimes just practice in a, either a demo account or trade micros. Thoughts on the the NQ low? Okay, let's switch. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna keep this up on my other screen. And if you guys want to watch the Nikkei for me as well, I will be bouncing back and forth. I'm. I might consider holding on to this as a runner. Um, we already we are already down a half a percent, and yeah, I'm, I'm a little indecisive of letting this one just go as a runner. So anyway. Let's talk about the Nikkei or the NASDAQ again, because I'll go to NASDAQ and then we'll talk about gold and then we'll finish it off with crude oil. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just looking for continuation to the downside. This is the daily on the NASDAQ. Then the next thing I want to look at is the, the 60 minute. So here's the 60 minute on the NASDAQ. And I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, right? We, we've had this huge sell-off. You know, remember if you guys were taught, I think this was last Thursday or Friday or something like that, where we were seeing that, you know, could we break out and then we failed and we sold right back off. And, you know, sure enough, we didn't break out and it was a failed and it's been, you know, selling off ever since. We did break this. This was a little bit. And since then, it's it was a huge sell-off. But what I like to do is I look. I like to look at the left, just go to the left and see, is there any areas that could signal this is a good area to buy? Um, and to be honest, no. I, I mean, you can look where we're at. And back in January, this is January, February, and, you know, yeah, pretty much January and February. What I see is there is some support here around 17,800, right? Like here's some level, like key levels of support. Um, if we want to consider this and we ask ourselves, is this a big enough support that the NASDAQ can see a bounce? Um, I mean, we're kind of there right now. I mean, we're, we are consolidating in this area. Um, we're actually consolidating above this area. So yes, I, I very well could see the NASDAQ selling off at least down to this zone. Now it's not a perfect one, it's a zone before we get a bounce because we're, we're right here and it's very hard to see us bouncing right now. Maybe we get there during the London session. Maybe we get there before the New York session open. I'm not sure. If we do get a rally between now and tomorrow, I would I would look to be a seller. Um, maybe we get up to the 18,000 level. That's a key psychological level. If we do start to see a rally, and then I'll be looking to take some you know good risk reward shorts. You know looking for, re, you know, support to become resistance. Um, that's what I'm going to be looking at. But until then, I'm not going to touch the NASDAQ. We're just kind of in no man's land. We, we've we sold off. We're not at a key level of support until we get down to closer to 800. And I don't want to be a buyer 
in this type of a market and this big of a sell-off, not near a major support. I also don't want to be a seller because we've sold off so far and we all know how the net, how the markets could just rally. Um, we've seen that here and we've seen that on all of these sell-offs. It was just been bought up. And with hindsight, this was a great pullback and continuation with hindsight. So I'm going to watch and I'm going to wait and I'm just going to sit on my hands here on the NASDAQ. Let's see. Is Nikkei moved? Nikkei has not moved since we pushed down into the 500s. All right. Let's take a look at gold. Gold. Gold is something else, guys. This has been one heck of a market and it just happens to be right when I started to trade gold. We're seeing some crazy volatility. Here is the daily chart on gold. And we're essentially at pretty much highs, right? We, we've broken up above our April, you know, last April, all of last year, you know, in the fall and even through March. And there's a lot of political and, you know, horrible news that's going on around the world. And gold has just been on a tear. This, as as much as I want to look at this and say, and let me show you guys, this really ugly bearish candle looks very similar to this one that happened in December. And so immediately when you see that, the first thing I want to say is, you know, we're due for <laughs> this should signal a bit more of a sell-off, but with the news and with everything that's going on, um, anything could happen. And I would not be surprised that we just keep rallying and going up into the right. So I don't get too much from this daily chart. Um, if we zoom into a 60 minute chart, then it starts to granulize. We start to zoom in and we could start to see more of the, the picture of what's going on here in gold. And so, yeah, the trend is up and to the right. Very simple, very basic. We did have a huge sell off here. Um, well, we had a huge rally and we sold right back down to this area. And whenever we get down into this zone, people just been buying gold back up. Um, so the question now, what I'm looking at is, do we just look for opportunities to buy or do we try and take some short trades for a pullback? Um, in this type of a market environment, we want to be buyers rather than sellers because yeah, I did take a short gold up here. If you guys remember that on Friday, I was short at like 2436 and then I, I took a quick profit. It's very hard to find areas up here to say, you know, this offers a good risk reward to sell it. Um, especially when we're, we've been so bullish. Maybe, I, I mean, maybe we look for just some type of a pullback to support like we have seen before in the past where these little pullbacks have been great buying opportunities. And so sure enough, I think I'm just going to wait to see if there's pullbacks to find buying opportunities in gold. And, and I think that's it. All right, let's get to a few more questions. Um, let's see. Do you ever go multiple contracts with different instruments? How and when in your journey do you decide to start op opening more lots? So it depends on your account size. I mean, for me, right? Because every trader is different um, and how you want to scale in and scale out. Short gold. Only market I refuse to short. I mean, yeah, right now I would not be looking to short gold. The only time I would have a short going on gold is just a quick in and out scalp based on technicals. Um, Damage core. Never heard of this guy. Is he another fruru? Not sure what you mean by that damage. Can you explain a mini and a micro? Yeah, so I'm going to jump over onto the NASDAQ to explain a mini versus a micro really quick for everybody who's new here. And on that note, let's do a quick poll. Um, let's see who's new. Everybody, who is new to slow markets? I just want to get a quick gauge to see how many traders are new and if not. 
um, while I answer some of these questions. I trade silver instead. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna briefly go over the difference between a mini and a micro, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you could find this online. So a mini, so as you guys can see here, here's the NASDAQ E-mini. It's $200, or not $200, $20 per point. Uh, a micro is one-tenth of that. So it's only $2 per point, and it's a way for you to scale down, manage risk, you know, scale in, scale out, and you could do a lot more um, instead of just taking in bigger position sizes for a mini. So that is the very basics. More information, you can find it. There's plenty of resources online. Um, I, I don't want to go into in depth about that. So I hopefully make, does that make sense to you guys? If not, we do have a top step discord that you guys could come and join and ask questions um, there. And I'm sure they'll be more than happy to, to answer, answer that. I'm going to keep the Nikkei open for a minute and I'm going to answer a few more questions and we will touch base on crude oil. Uh, Seth, I choose new because this is like my fourth time here. Um, sure. It, <laughs> if that's what you consider new, sure. Because we're at about 1,200 people watching. And like I said, my, my goal is to help traders who do not trade or who does not trade the New York session or who cannot trade the New York session. Um, yeah, for that reason. Hi, Dakota, do you have your own Discord? No, I do not have Discord. I do not have social media. Um, I'm just helping traders out here at Top Step. Top Step is, in my opinion, the best prop for firm to help new traders. We have an amazing Discord. We have amazing Top Step uh, TV during the daytime. We have, I have this beautiful ability to help traders here during slow markets. And the nice thing is it's for free. If I had this when I first started out, I know it would have made a big difference in my life. Um, and I hope to do the same and kind of pass that on, right? Yeah, I don't have small, uh, social media. <laughs> social media to me is a distraction. Uh, the biggest thing I had was is like a TikTok. And that's solely so I can, you know, I have some friends and my girlfriend and anybody who I'm talking to find funny TikToks and it could be bad. I could be sitting there getting ready for bed and, you know, swipe, 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 swipe. And the next thing I know it's been, you know, an hour or two hour and it's been frustrating knowing that I've just lost, you know, some sleep watching to uh, social media and I, I don't have Facebook. I don't have anything else. It's just too much for me. I, I'd rather just focus on myself and, and trade. Uh, no, Abraham. Nope. Honest. I, I do not. I, I do not have Instagram or Facebook or <laughs> any social medias. You could try and find me. Good luck. You guys know me. <laughs> One of the biggest refreshers is, yeah, I mean, everyone goes through that, myself included. And I will say it can be, a. it takes a lot of your mental capital, um, social media. It can be very addicting. Um, like I said, I was, and I still can get on to TikTok every once in a while and time goes by way too fast. And if the one hour you spend going through social media, you could spend going to the gym, you could spend doing something else to improve your mental, um, state, because guess what? We are all traders here and trading is one of, if not one of the most, um, mentally exhausting things that we can do to make money. Uh, I'm not saying it's the most, I'm just saying it, it definitely is top five. I, I don't know what else. If you guys could imagine, name me one other, one, one thing else that could be more mentally exhausting than a trader um, for us mentally going through depression and all that. Make or lose $9,000 in a day. I mean, yesterday or during the New York session, I lost $9,000 in my live account. Um, how difficult is that? Okay, now we're talking surgeon, astronaut, military, poker player. Well, I could I could debate this stuff. Come on, I I don't want to turn this into a debate. Heart surgeon, roulette, card counting. Oh. <laughs> poker player can be up there. 
I, I could say poker players because we're over here. I mean, especially when you were trading with our own money. Um, if you trade with your own money and you're trying to make a living and you're losing your own money, something that your family depends on, that could be very difficult. Um, here at Top Step, we are risking Top Step's money. Uh, yeah, I'm just watching this Nikkei trade. There's not really much going on. Um, it's kind of broke down into the 500 and hesitating. I do like that we are not immediately bouncing. I like that. Um, it just means there's a lot of selling pressure and we're kind of staying into these 500s. Um, if we zoom into a, say, a five minute chart, I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit more. So we sold off, we're staying below this. And this is one thing I am at least liking is this with support. Support is now showing that it is becoming resistance. So that's giving me a little bit more confident in this trade to see if we could have another leg or another push lower um, here during slow markets. I'm gonna watch this. If we do break up, I might just consider to just close this out, lock in the $2,000 and be, be done with it. Uh, yeah, I, I, going through that is quite the, the side note. But any more questions about trading before we hop over to crude oil? Like I said, we have just over 20 minutes left and I wanna make sure that I get to some of your guys' questions. We covered the NASDAQ, gold, um, we're watching the Nikkei now, and then we'll touch base on crude oil. El Toro, what keeps you from taking the remaining profit and waiting for a bounce? So I already took, I, so I was in three contracts short, as you guys could all see here. Um, I took profit for one, I took profit for the second one, and essentially this is a, a risk-free trade. And if you guys remember when I was trading with MP and the team on Friday during Top Step TV Fast Markets, I explained it. And, and what I said is that is one of the best things that we could do if we're getting into multiple contracts. It allows us to close out for some profit and then if the market does decide to just go in your direction and you know rally or in this case sell off i'm in the position to take advantage of it meaning you know if i zoom out and you know this is a perfect example you know if i was doing this up here maybe i did the same exact thing up here or here or you know a lot of these examples and then it, the market just for some reason decides to just sell off, right? If we do that here, say we just for some reason just tank and we sell off another 40 ticks, I'm in position to take advantage of that. Now, given I'm not expecting the market to sell off like this, um, in no way would I say market's going to do that. I, I'm not going for it. I'm not expecting it. Um, However, I am in a position where I locked in profit and I can trail this. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the market to give me another pivot. I, I might even zoom into a smaller time frame where I could see these pivots a little bit be better. And pivots, support and resistance is pretty similar. And, and I talk about those simultaneously. Um, and so if we do get another push lower, then that will give me an opportunity to move my stop loss down to that next pivot point or that next resistance. And I want to put myself in a position to where I could have a risk-free trade and then leave maybe a runner overnight. Um, so I, I hope that explains. That's something I went through. Um, I would recommend maybe rewatching Fast Markets Friday it was me, MP, and Coach J. Um, you know, MP took, I think it was 10 or 15 contracts long on the NASDAQ in the house account. And he took off five, and then he took off another five. And, you know, I, I was kind of explaining the same thing. I'm like, hey, it's great. You've made profit. You took profit. You know, I would suggest leaving at least just one contract on for a runner. Uh, moving your stop loss to break even. So worst case scenario, you're scratch on that one, but you've already locked in $6,000 worth of profit. So same here. So I've already locked in about $1,700 worth of profit. So 
what I would be doing is if I move my stop loss to here, I'm essentially risking $400 to make, you know, maybe this sells off another $1,500. So the risk reward is much greater than, um, yeah, the risk reward is just much greater. Uh, the risk is less than what the reward would be. And this is the exact opposite of what a lot of traders do, where if this was against them, so let's, let's give this for example. If I was long and this was my take profit, a lot of traders, what they'll do is they'll wait. They'll try and wait and they'll wait and they'll wait thinking the market, oh, the market will eventually turn around, right? Waiting for the market to turn around. And the next thing we know, the market just keeps going down and down and down. And the traders are having a hard time cutting their losses. So this is kind of the opposite of what most traders do is they cut their losses quicker. And then when the market is in profit, they try and just let the runners go. So pretty much the opposite of what a lot of traders um, traders do. Not cutting my winners. Um, I, sometimes I like to tell traders that take profits can be viewed as just a stop loss for your profits. That's what it is. A take profit means you are capping how much profit you're gonna be making. Um, there's nothing wrong against it. Locking in profit is, is always a good idea, but that's the beauty of scaling in and scaling out. Impress, there is no such thing as a free trade. No, there is not at first, but once you start locking in profit, then I go this, and then guess what? I am now in a risk-free trade because I've already taken the risk, I've already locked in profit, and so therefore, this trade and this runner that I have and I can leave on is free, right? It's, it's risk-free, um, given that the market doesn't have something dramatic and might get a lot of slippage. But I do trust my platform, I tr do trust the broker that I'm using, um, and, and the slippage is very, very minimal. I've had some dramatic slippage. There's a big difference between simulated account slippage and, and live account slippage. Hey Dakota, is 50K enough to trade full time? Um, it depends on your expectations. I would say that 50K is enough to start learning how to trade and start being c consistent. And to be honest guys, if, if you're looking to make a living trading, um, start out small and it's all in perspective. An extra $100 a day can pay for a lot of what your daily expenses are. $100 a day, do the math, right? $500 a week, that pays for, you know, say do that for four weeks. On average, that's $2,000 a month and I guarantee you that could pay rent, that could pay my phone bill and food. I mean, it pays for a lot and so it's more about expectations um, where, yeah, you see a lot of people online, you can see traders from Top Step, we're talking about big money, but there is a reason why Top Step says $200 because that's, that's very small in comparison and that is a more realistic goal of is looking for $200. $1 is enough if you're good enough, consistent is everything. How to transition to day trading to overnight trading? Um, it's a tough transition, but I would just recommend come join me. Um, I try and do this, or I do this Monday night through Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central. And essentially, I'm doing the same thing. If you guys see how I trade the New York session, and I will be, and, I, and I, I'll double check, but I will be joining um, Power Players tomorrow, I believe at 11 a.m. Central. And then I believe I'll, I'll double check this. Actually, let's check it right now. I'm going to be trading fast markets with MP and Coach J again this Friday. And it's the same thing. It, it really is, guys. If you guys watch the way I trade at night versus the way I trade during fast markets, it's the same thing. Um, the time frame's just different. It's, it's a lot faster. You can see these markets are very slow. I'm using higher time frames, and uh, it's a lot slower. And during fast markets, I'm using smaller time frames, and the markets are moving a lot quicker. So yes, I will be on Top Step TV tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and then I will be on again 
um, Friday morning during fast markets at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and I will be trading. And it's the same technique, the same way I'm getting in and getting out. Basic technical analysis. The only thing is time frames. Like that really is. What time Friday? Friday at 8 a.m. Central. Thank you, Sarah. Can we see you trade the fast market in the week during the day somewhere? Yeah, here at Top Step TV. I, whenever I'm on Top Step TV during the day, I am trading. I, I'm a trader first. And whenever I am on Top Step, I'm watching the markets. I'm talking through any entries or exits. And everybody in here who has watched my slow markets and, and has also watched me trade on Top Step TV, um, I'm sure you guys could say the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, slow markets, fast markets, it doesn't really matter. Technical analysis is technical analysis. Hello, Dakota. Do you think um, Nikkei is making another lower high or is it a breakout? Yeah, I'm, I'm watching this. Remember, I'm watching this with like live. This is live. So I'm a little... A little skeptical right now, but until we break this, let me see. Yeah, until we break, say, 7.05, I'm still fine with being into this short. So I'm watching, I'm watching the market move in waves, right? So maybe we just see another wave and a continue. Like, of course, this is ideal. The market's not going to move exactly like this because the first thing I'm seeing is maybe something like this i would love this would be a, a great place if the market does pivot to move my stop loss so what i am seeing is there's a little bit of bullish momentum where we are making higher lows and we're starting to make higher highs on a very smaller time frame but this is the one minute if we get back to what where i typically trade and let's zoom in here Man, this is hurting. Okay, we are still in a downtrending market and I still like this price action. This is more of a bigger picture. There's a lot of downward pressure and you can say that we're in a channel going down and to the right. So I'm still confident in this trade. If we do break this channel, then I would be looking to get out of it. Um, yeah. One more opinion, please. If I get in an entry on the NASDAQ at 860, do I keep a trailing stop loss at break even or if I'm expecting a bullish? I mean, I'm not really giving like trading advice in terms of this is what you should do, this is how you should do it. I am always going to be there for if you can manage risk then I'm all for it. Um, keeping a trailer on, I, I do love that aspect of keeping a, you know, one one contract on for a runner. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit distracted. I'm gonna keep this. And I might go back to this by the end of this. Let's look at crude oil. So as promised, here's crude oil. And man, I, I missed an opportunity, guys. Everybody knows what I was looking for. It happened. Um, we had this breakdown and we had the stop loss hunt. So if you guys have been in my slow markets class before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We finally got this move pretty close to 84. I was thinking, and this was 100% my issue, is I was looking for us to break down and maybe run some like down to like 8380s, 8390s. And then I was going to be looking to buy it. Um, unfortunately, I did not get in. This was the move I was looking for. We had some support here, support here, and in these areas. And oil loves to run stop losses or find areas of liquidity, whatever you want to call it. Um, essentially, it just means run below support and then turn around and rally. So this is what I've been looking, I was looking for since basically what? The beginning of April. So the past two weeks, I was looking for this. I freaking missed it. Um, and here we are rallying back into the 86s. Man, it sucks to miss out on something like this. Um, this is something I'm looking at. This is the next area is I want to 
get in long oil. Like that is like, I want to buy oil. I, I want to find areas to buy oil. Um, and I am not going to be buying it right now, even though we could keep going up and up. Um, it sucks to watch this market move without me. It's just one of those where I have to wait. I have to practice discipline. Um, maybe we can get a pullback down into the 85s, um, lower 85 area. Uh, you know, may where we could say, you know, this was resistance. We broke out. If we get a pullback down to like 85 30s to 85 40s, then yes, I, I will consider taking a long. But until we get a pullback in oil, it's just I freaking missed it and it's spilt milk, right? Um, man, that was such a great opportunity. Um, oh, well, there will be more. Hey, coach, do you see a demand zone on the five minute in gold here for possibly a bounce higher? Go to great advice. Do you think algos are predatory towards retail size? I mean, I don't see why that could be a true statement. Um, market likes to find liquidity, right? And if there was a lot of people with stop losses down here in oil, I mean, definitely, why not go down there? You know, you have to have sellers for buyers to come in. So anyway, let's take a look at five minute. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, my analysis on the, on this is this could very well be a bullish flag on on gold. I'm just like crude oil. Crude oil and gold to me are the same um, in terms of my technical analysis. We've already rallied the move. We missed it. I just have to wait for a pullback if I want to be a buyer. I don't want to step in front of these markets and say I'm going to sell here because we could just break. Uh, we've seen that before. And yeah, I'm still in this Nikkei short. Um, actually, wow, this is. This is that pivot I was talking about. So there you go. There's that good example. This is where I could just move my stop loss there, lock in some profit, and there you go. There's that example where, yeah, that that worked out really, really nice, to be honest. There's that example. Man, if the market does exactly like I, like that, it doesn't work all the time, guys. Um, and, and there's the power of technical analysis is, exactly there um don't yeah follow your strategy right and as as much as i was kind of as i was watching it rally you do get that feeling like dang it i should have just closed out for profit down here what am i doing i'm letting the market go come back towards me i'm losing money uh, i'm giving up my winning trade blah 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 and all those emotions coming but it's about statistics it's about knowing yeah, I don't know how else I could put it, right? Expectancy, leaving a, a, a runner on, you know, all of that again. And now you go back and everyone who is closing it out, you know, going here is going to feel like crap if it does start to sell off and like, dang it, I closed it out too soon. And now we're starting to push down and, and maybe start to make new lows and all that fun stuff. <laughs> it's hard to hold on to trades, guys. It really is hard to hold on to trades during movements like that, um, right? Where this is what we were looking for. <laughs> How about those? That's that's interesting. Um, not all the time does the market just do what I say it needs to do. Yeah, I'm still going to see. Maybe I just let this trade go overnight. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm still debating that. It's we're, we have five minutes left of class. Uh, I might watch this. I mean, I'm in profit, right? And if I do let this one just run um, until tomorrow, maybe. Uh, maybe I just have a take profit. Let me see. Let me, I have to zoom out to a higher one. Maybe I just have a take profit somewhere down here. Something like this, right? And then say, you know what? Worst case scenario, I make a couple hundred dollars. Best case scenario, I make a couple thousand dollars. So I'm risking nothing. There's zero risk on this other than it pulling back and I still make money. So I'm going to make either 200 or 2000. And this, I'm just guessing. I don't know exactly how much this is. But yeah, maybe something like this. Um, maybe I'll go eat some dinner and then I'll come back and I'll check the markets again. Um, and then make a decision. 
But I'll make a decision before I go to bed to either just close it out for profit here or let it run. But I, I think this is a good place to stop here. Um, because yeah, we never know what the market's gonna do and I'm perfectly fine because now I've locked in some profit and I'm I'm fine where where my account is right now. Oh, anyway, let's finish up for a few more questions. We have five minutes left and I'm gonna go get some I'm gonna go get some food. Yeah, Sal, I mean you can't look at your unrealized PL. Um yeah. I mean, unrealized PL is exactly what it is. Unrealized, it's not a consideration. Um, as of right now, I am in a profitable trade, and worst case scenario is I'm profitable. I've already closed off two of these contracts for profit. Obviously, you guys could see that here. Profit there, profit there. And yeah, if we do sell off and break to new lows, then I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah, thanks, Rips. After a rough day, I mean, it's nice to get a good trade um, to, to to start off my Tuesday. This is a good start to the Tuesday. Like I said, this is my live account. I'm up $2,300 now. Um, I've already locked in $1,700, and this is a great, great way to finish it off. Um, I'm going to answer a couple questions, and we could watch Nikkei, and maybe it just breaks in the middle by the end of class. I'll watch it. You got one more question, guys. If you guys want it, I'm still here for another question. And I'll, I'll watch this Nikkei trade. What, what am I going to eat? I don't know. Um, I'm thinking Panda Express. <laughs> if we want to talk about what I want for food. Let me see. Do we have some more questions? Okay, here's two questions that that was sent. So the first one. Is there a reason why you do not lower your stop loss to your entry now? Um, I think I covered that to where I was waiting for the market to give me a reason. And now there is my reason was it was it was up here. And now the market just gave me the reason of this one. Um, sure, I could have said that this was a reason. I'm happy I didn't because I would have been stopped off on that uh, resistance. If I get stopped off now and the market turns all the way up here, I'm perfectly fine with being stopped out there. Um, Dakota, is there anything besides a stop loss that will invalidate your trade? Detox, no. The stop loss is my invalidation or some type of big news event that's gonna be coming out and I just wanna close and be flat before the news. Then yeah, a lot of times I will say, okay, we have news coming out in 20 minutes. I'm gonna be flat because I do not want to risk anything. So stop loss or news would invalidate my trade or guess what maybe it's the end of the new york session and we need to make sure that we're closed out of the end of the new york session and sure that that could be another reason um do you have better results in new york or after markets um and messiah so my statistics and my trading is a lot better during slow markets than it is during the new york session um and then the I think a big reason is because I have a lot of just runners during my slow markets class. It's something I'm comfortable. I'm trading higher time frames, and to me, technical analysis um, can be a lot better for me on higher time frames. The New York session is very volatile. There's news happening, and it could be really messy. So I like slow markets. That's why I've chosen to help Top Step out and to teach slow markets because to me I learned how to trade at this time and this is this exact time you know right now is my favorite time to trade and this is when I am a much better trader now than during the New York session last question how do you track your statistics how do you find the probabilities of some of your strategies do you have a program or go old school so on the top step dashboard that's a great place to get to track your statistics. Um, I like those, but for me and myself, um, the platform could keep track of them. NinjaTrader tracks it. I believe um, Top Step X is tracking it and Top Step X is gonna continue to um, grow and expand and be more useful in terms of the statistics. But anything else is kind of just an old, old is, is an Excel spreadsheet old school? Um, Maybe you could consider Excel old school, 
But yeah, XL can be considered old school. I'll say XL, sure. <laughs> Richard Harris, you could wonder that. I've never, okay. I think I'm going to end it here, guys, um, and call it good. Actually, let's leave it for, sorry, guys, one more minute. I want to see if we could break through. I'll, I'll show you guys the break. XL is eternal. XL, I've watched, you guys believe it or not, we, we are starting to break down here. I, I don't want to end on you guys not watching this. We might as well watch it live. I, I don't mind staying after another five minutes, but as we're watching Nikkei and seeing if we could break down, um, I watched the Microsoft Excel tournament in Las Vegas. It was pretty dang interesting. I, I didn't really know exactly what was going on, but the announcer was pretty, pretty excited and he was really, it was something else. Um, I'm excited for the Top Step Trader League. I'm curious to see how that's going to be. If we're going to get some announcers, is Andre going to be an announcer? I, I don't know what it's going to look like. I would love to see, and I'm excited for some Top Step Trading League details. Um, it's going to be this fall. I definitely want to be a part of it. Uh, I'm excited. It's going to be in Vegas, I understand, but we'll see. Danielle, you have to ask Jack about the XL League. Is Jack... Was Jack, I, you know what, it wouldn't surprise me if Jack was, uh, was trying to get in on the, the Microsoft Excel tournament. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask Jack now. I'm, I'm going to put that in a note. Ask Jack if he was in Microsoft Excel. He's a big Excel ner nerd. That wouldn't surprise me. So... <laughs> That and the spelling bee. No, I, I stay very far away from spelling. My, my grammar and my spelling is my one of my biggest weaknesses. So <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what Jack. Maybe I'll ask him tomorrow during power players. I'm sure he'll be around. I'll, I'll ask Jack. Um, so okay, I think we're just kind of stalling out here on the Nikkei. and I'm gonna end it there guys. So thank you. I will look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow and we'll review this trade. We'll see how it plays out. Um, feel free to follow, follow along and I will review this trade tomorrow. Like I said, I'm up over 2,000 in my live account and we are just getting started for a Tuesday. Good night, everybody.